What if I were to tell you that everything you know about sin is a lie? Well, not everything you know about sin, but the way you look at it. What do you mean by that? Well, let me tell you. You have been taught to fear sin. Sin is bad, which is right. Sin is not of God, which is right. Sin is sin, and the wages of sin are death, right? It separates you from God, but it puts in you this fear. So what happens is you are walking in fear, thinking about how you don't want to sin. Yeah, I do that all the time. That's crazy. Well, what if I told you this? Instead of fearing it, you understood why God doesn't want you to do it. Go on. Well, if I told you that, you know, eating certain things made your body basically depreciate, very toxic and go bad, you're going to stop eating those things, right? Good point. Just might. It's the same thing with sin. Do tell. Listen to this. If I were to tell you that uh, lust you know, means lack of willpower. If you always fall into lust, you lack willpower. So you to build strong willpower, you overcome the attachment to lust. Or even going as far as killing. When you kill, it affects you emotionally. Then you have emotional damage. Or any sexual immorality that you've been dealt with affects you physically and emotionally. Right? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So, this is what you do. You ask God to search your heart to be free from that. You pray for deliverance over that thing. And then you actually confront that thing before God, any sin that you're struggling with. And that way, you can look at that thing and not be afraid to fall into that sin, but actually understand something that's even great. What's that? Is that Jesus Christ loved us so much that he just demanded that we did not do these things. However, he came down flesh to give the people a true understanding on what the law really meant. You mean like when he was changing the structure and teaching the Pharisees and Sadducees that they were doing it all wrong? Exactly. They were trying to uphold the law. They were trying not to sin instead of serving and pleasing God. Oh, so what you're saying is if we have a better understanding on the effects of sin and why God did not want us to have it, then we're more than likely not going to sin. That is correct. But the trick of the enemy is to manipulate our minds to think that no matter what we do, we are going to be subject to fall into sin. I mean, every man sins and falls short. Yes, every man has sinned and has fallen short, but you have the power through Christ Jesus once you believe on him and receive the power of the Spirit to live without sin. Now, I will add this. He is an advocate to the Father for you in the event that you do sin. So you're saying that we can live without sin, but if we fall, Jesus Christ is there to take us in and to forgive us. Exactly. So, yes, we have sinned. We've sinned in the past and life happens. Things might stir up or you might sin again, but be confident in knowing that if you serve God, if you seek you first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto you, even a life free of sin. We cannot live a sin-free life. I was with you up to this point, but we cannot live a sin-free life. Who told you that? What does the word of God teach you? Find out for yourself and leave a comment below. It's gonna be It's gonna be It's gonna be It's gonna be